Thank you for waiting. Now, I would like to invite the President and the CEO of SoftBank Corporation, Mr. Miyakawa Junich, for a special lecture, Solving Social Issues by Implementing a Digital Society. SoftBank Corporation is working to solve the social issues and achieve the SDGs through its business and cooperate the activities by deepen ties with the local government and communities. And it also enhances, uh, harnesses the power of digital technologies such as 5G, AI, and ICT for the development of a sustainable society. Uh, the floor is yours, Mr. Miyagawa. Uh, good morning. I am Miyagawa from SoftBank. And today, I have 45 minutes for my speech, so I'd like you to bear with me. So, uh, this is a sudden question, but what will our planet look like in 100 years? So, this is the perspective uh, I'd like to have in my speech today. Then, first of all, the 4.6 billion years has passed uh, since the birth of the Earth. And after that, uh, after 1 billion years, then the birth of life happened. Then after that, uh, we, the Earth experienced the Cambrian explosion. Then the birth of a terrestrial organism. Then the information was uh, included in the terrestrial organisms. That's when the uh, the creature have started to evolve, and the creature came to the land and evolved to the human being. And this Homo sapiens, this is a Latin, the insight and uh, it has uh, come to the mankind. That's. Uh, it's about 200,000 years ago. And if we convert this 4.6 billion years into one year calendar, and let's say the 4.6 billion years ago is, uh, is the 1st January, then the 200,000 years ago is actually the uh, 11.37 p.m. Uh, of the 31st of December, so it's only the 23 uh, minutes in terms of the history. And since the 200,000 years ago to date, uh, the humankind stepped toward the current days. And there was a big transition pr uh, time, and this is called uh, the Industrial Revolution. It, uh, it was about the 1700, so it's about uh, 200 uh, more uh, years be, uh, ago. And the train uh, have uh, developed and the technology have de uh, evolved. And medical care has evolved, and water, and power, and gas, such infrastructure has developed in a better way. So as a result of that, at the time of the uh, industrial revolution, the population was one billion. Uh, one billion. However, it uh, increased drastically. So compared to uh, 1800, we have eight times bigger, a larger population. And this humankind, after the Industrial Revolution, for the past 200 years, the humankind have obtained abundance. And we have tap water immediately at the kitchen. And the, uh, we can just uh, turn on the light by pushing the button and gas easily. And uh, the humankind also have their vehicles, not just the cars, but also the airplanes as well, so that we have the uh, abundance in the transportation, so we can go anywhere in the world by using such transportation. Then as a result of that, uh, we uh, see the big increase, the similar increase in terms of the energy consumption. And uh, so the core, uh, the coal use expansion and the petroleum use expansion. So we uh, used, uh, we have been using the fossil 
uh, the power, and compared to 1800, uh, we are using the 280 times uh, bigger the fuel or power, and we consume the power, then we emit CO2, and the emission of uh, the CO2 is 1300 times bigger now. So when we look at the 200 years, so the world population was is eight times, and to pursue abundance, we consume energies even more. So uh, this is a 280 times bigger, and as a result of that, the CO2 emission is 1300 times. So the global warming is the uh, the disaster caused by humankind is what we need to repeatedly telling ourselves in transforming the situation. It's uh, totally our um, responsibility to recover uh, this alarming situations and I'd like to now specifically talk about this uh, global warming so we do hear this term uh, COP COP and this is a um, mechanism and then the um, the platform forum which is uh, run by United Nations and then that 191850 is the um, is a level that we're referring to as the standard and we are uh, have confirmed that we need to uh, limiting the increase of of our temperature um, from that timing to be within uh, 1.5 degrees Celsius. And uh, 2020 uh, already was the past the point of um, exceeding the plus 1.1 uh, degree Celsius. So when that discussion happened that uh, we uh, already had only the delta of 0 0.4 degrees Celsius and if you see this the average temperature rise of the whole nation or the whole whole world uh, one plus 1.5 degrees Celsius is the goal um, that's agreed upon in uh, COP26 by many uh, participating countries. So we need to be uh, become a more active, more aggressive in implementing the policies to um, stop the temperature rise. And it needs to be much more than what we have been doing. But and you see that it's not really realistic uh, to keep this within the uh, the 1.5. Uh, the extension of the current trend is plus 2.7 degrees Celsius. Um, so we do have a various in the scenarios uh, that's drawn out. So net to zero, carbon net to zero. If everyone um, does everything that's uh, been figured out and committed, then only then uh, we can achieve. Um, even at then, we can only achieve this at plus at 2.7 degrees Celsius. And so that that's something that I would like to have as our, our common understanding in uh, going ahead with the rest of the presentation. And um, if you look a uh, hundred years from now, um, so you know from what we have been uh, trajectory. Thing. Um, we see this you now between this red zones of plus 3.3 to plus 5.7 to be the realistic landing point, which is the risk scenario um, bandwidth. And what what will be the uh, impact coming from the global warming? And uh, 1850 to 900, if you consider 1850 to be zero, uh, this is a 2020, so call now to be 2020, although it's already 2023. We have already uh, risen 1.1 uh, degrees Celsius, and then the sea level uh, is already 20 centimeter more than back uh, 8050 to 900. And then we do have uh, the drying of the area 1.7 times, and it's more frequent. Uh, the, um, the severe rain, uh, storm, uh, more. And if if we manage you know, somehow to keep this within 1.5 degrees Celsius, um, the COP goal for 2100, 
this will be from this point. Uh, from now, the sea level will be farther plus 36 centimeter from uh, how it is right now. Uh, even if we keep the 1.1, uh, if we achieve, even this is even if if we achieve the COP goal, and as this is much more severe um, in all um, in in many aspects, and then so what's going to happen if we um, will be having this plus 2.7 uh, degrees Celsius, which is a realistic uh, scenario, and then worst scenario, if we uh, have a plus 5.7 degrees Celsius, how would it be? The sea level can be as high as plus 90 centimeter from how it is right now. And what's really critical, drought will be 3.2 times. And then um, these uh, heavy rainfall, um, Taihu can have a um, 70 meter per second kind of wind, which we uh, see it's a one in 10 years time, very rare one, but it can happen really frequently if this kind of uh, temperature rise be uh, the place. And then we were benefited a lot from this uh, very fortunate environment. So um, cutting of the trees, um, this is a really sensational numbers. If we see the, the area size of the forests um, in the last 30 years, we have lost a 420 million hectare of a forest, which is 11 times uh, the size of the whole nation of Japan. So we have lost in 11 Japan um, in the last you know, 30 years in terms of the forest area. And the pollution of the air and from the beginning of the first uh, industrial revolution, the CO2 concentration has come up to be 50% more than 1850. And the pollution of water quality, we are losing it. 300,000 kids um, every year because they are consuming this uh, unsanitary water because of this polluted water. And then the uh, pollution of uh, ocean, uh, we see a lot of um, topics uh, discussed around the plastic waste. Um, currently, we're creating 130 million ton metric of plastic waste. And um, by 2050, if we don't do anything, it can be as much as 800 million ton metric. And this 800 ton, uh, million ton metric is more than uh, is, is, is exactly the same as the total weight of all the fish that's existing on this planet. So we would have um, plastic waste uh, created in a year, which is equivalent to the whole fish uh, population and extinction of animals or the living um, uh, um, beings. We believe you know, we have 1.7 million different species on this planet, but then out of 1.7, 1 million are in danger of extinction. And the uh, diminishing of the biodiversity, uh, vertebra, uh, the number of uh, vertebra. So the human beings has become eight times in a population. But if we uh, add up all the numbers, population of the vertebra, um, it's actually six, uh, reduced by 68% in account compared to 1970 level. The desert, um, uh, the land becoming a desert, um, a desertization. Um, the the total area of desert is increasing by more than 1% every year. And then the number of a population who lost their inhabitant um, area because the, the, those became a, a desert is 500 million yen in uh, these uh, 20 years. And the last is this uh, radiation waste. Um, you need to increment uh, this uh, radiation waste for 100,000 years so that it will no longer have a radiation impact. But we do have a one, um, 19,000 19, uh, tometric of a radiation waste in the, already um, in this country. And uh, if you see this, Okay, we have this uh, so-called the senior who carried the society on their shoulders until now. 
and that's on the left hand side. That this is the uh, the stats of the world that they lived in, and the right hand side is the you know the the world uh, the our kids will be living in and for, as an extra generation. Um, so this is like uh, the whole senior from the day they were born to the day they die. The temperature rises by 1.3 degrees Celsius. I consider myself to be in one of the um, uh, uh, to be one of those uh, population. I do remember my kids' uh, days, summer holiday to be much cooler than uh, the summer of right now. So I do experience this. And then I'm just really amazed that it's only, uh, the difference is only by 1.3 degrees Celsius. And if it's going to be more than that, how hot is that summer going to be? It's really concerning. I, I do have this. And then if a kid who was born in 2020 lives until 2100, what kind of change are they going to um, experience in their life is this. The temperature can be rising by 1.6 to 4.6 degrees Celsius within their life and the sea level, like, you know, from now. Um, so uh, that means that it could be increased to 4.6 degrees then the sea level, uh, level rise will be around up to the 90 centimeters. So the large disaster, the frequency will increase. And a possible world event by 2100, and this is, is the risk, risk scenarios. The first, the super typhoon, the wind speed uh, 70 uh, meter per second. This has been a one uh, time in a 200 uh, years, uh, the super typhoon, but this could be the four times more. And also the drought and the heat wave, this will affect the 8 billion people and uh, the heat damage could uh, occur to 8 billion people. That means that uh, we might have to picture uh, the world where the people will not no longer uh, live in the earth. And also the, uh, the grain yield will be half and uh, risk of hunger also the, due to the food water shortage, the war and the conflict to happen even more. And also the uh, the caused by the permafrost, uh, the wing, the new viruses could uh, affect the humankind. And uh, it is said that, that there are two new the, uh, novel the virus um, identified. So the risk of the infection could be the big, uh, the negative, the, contribu uh, the contributor uh, to the humankind the survival. What is sustainability? The society where the environment, society, and economy develop the sustainably. And in this world, we need to coexist and continue to grow. And uh, there was a time when we didn't think about uh, the global environment as part of the balance. However, now we have to uh, focus on a global environment uh, to be part of our li everyday life. So we have to reflect on the uh, lessons learned from the past. Then we have to uh, look at uh, these matters on, uh, as our own matters, and we have to um, uh, turn this or the pass this to the next generation. And I believe most of you here will agree with me. Now, I'd like to explain some of the examples we are doing in the world. And today, I'd like to introduce the case in Amsterdam uh, in the uh, Netherlands. And the sea level is minus two meter, and this is surrounded by the canal. On the left hand side, you can see the current map. And currently, on average, 
Uh, we talked about the 20 centimeter or 30 centimeters uh, level rise, but it depends on where you are. And in case of Amsterdam, uh, they've already experienced a 20 cent, uh, 26 centimeter rise already. And around 2050, it is said or it is estimated that it will increase by 40 centimeters. So most of the areas uh, in uh, Amsterdam could be underwater. So the uh, Netherlands uh, faces this um, the risks uh, for the Amsterdam, and this is what they are doing as initiatives. First, the uh, 2007, they formulated action plans for the climate change, including the energy saving and reduction of fossil fuel use, also the renewable uh, energy promotions. So the energy themes are the main uh, themes here. And CO2 emissions reduction target is 40% by 2025. That's they set up as an action and a pur uh, purposes. So now I'd like to introduce the action plans they set, and uh, we might see uh, want to see the possibilities where we can utilize this in Japan. The first, uh, the smart city of realization, is the big topic here. And the first thing they did, so based on these action plan, uh, plans, the key is who is going to take these actions? Then who will check whether these actions are taken? By collaboration between the public and the private sectors, they created the consortium, and more than 200 uh, projects were uh, carried out. And the main item or the action is to open the data uh, the provided by the municipalities. And it says that one point, uh, one, uh, I'm sorry, that 12,000 uh, data. But uh, I'm not sure what a unit uh, this is talking about. But in Anyway, the, uh, this is a huge amount of the data. For example, the smart gas meter uh, information is already uh, the, uh, disclosed, or the smart uh, parking information. The parking uh, information is available and visible to everybody. So that's an example. And if you take a look at the center, the smart building, uh, this is uh, has been uh, effective. And this is similar to what we are doing. So I'd like to in, uh, explain this uh, smart building idea. Uh, there is a post office. This is the existing building. And in 2018, they renovated the post office and um, turned it to the rental office. And within this rental office, they installed 65,000 sensors. And in many ways, they uh, created the plans for control the sensors. And from the highest building environment rating, uh, that Netherlands was the first country to receive that. And this is mainly to save the energy consumption. And the result is that the 70% reduction was achieved for the energy consumptions. And when you look at the left-hand side, the temperature, humidity, or the CO2, the concentration, so by using the IoT devices and putting the sensors in, within the um, center and the buildings and analyze that, they optimize the consumption, then the activities of the human being and also the energy consumption, this can be also utilized to the implementation of the uh, power saving in the people's activities. And from the left side, this first a uh, thing that Amsterdam uh, did is to share the issue. That was a uh, that was a good thing they did, as as at the beginning, and for the sea level rise in case of the Netherlands, this is a realistic and a very severe challenge, and they shared this challenge and issues with <coughs> the population, and made the action plans. 
then uh, they utilized ICT realization of smart cities. Then finally, the, they executed the public and the private collaboration and a partnership. So the open, opening the municipal data was the entrance or the beginning of this initiative. Now, I am heading my um, conversation or the speech toward what we are doing in our company. And now we are in the fourth the industrial revolution era. The first uh, was when we had the first industrial the revolution uh, that was the mechanization uh, period. That was the first uh, revolution and we had the second and the third. And when we go, uh, when I go to the local the cities uh, for the speech, and I ask uh, people what the fourth the industrial revolution is, and most of people say that this is automation. Maybe that idea comes from the autom autonomous driving cars, and this has a very strong image. So uh, you might want to say the autonomous the driving vehicles. But actually, this is not uh, the automation. This is autonomization. Therefore, the fourth industrial uh, revolution is actually the autom autonomization, not automation. And this is the summary of what I just uh, talked about. So what we experienced in the third uh, industrial revolution, uh, through the PC and internet, uh, we experienced automation. and. We used, uh, we started to use the PC for the automation uh, production. And the fourth industry uh, revolution we are facing now is the automation and op optimization. We use AI and cloud and big data. By using this, we make the automation and optimization. And this fourth industrial revolution, um, if uh, you find yourself in an, in, an inside uh, indoor, uh, the energy usage consumption can be analyzed by AI so that the demand and supply can be coordinated autonomously. Um, the energy uh, provision company would be uh, the player. If you can um, analyze or predict even yet um, the consumption level, you can be efficiently uh, manufacture the energy um, outdoor situation, traffic accidents, and still uh, we do have uh, quite many as a human cost um, disaster. And with the autonomous driving, it would eliminate uh, traffic accidents altogether. Probably not. Not that easy because the autonomous drivings and then the uh, man driving uh, cars all mixed will be a very, very chaotic transitional period. And then the uh, roads information, traffic information, and all these um, the trees growth uh, alongside uh, streets, um, the map information will be totally different because of those uh, plants that's growing alongside rows um, depend on the seasonality. So AI autonomously making a judgment and regulate and controlling uh, various activities would be uh, the what you will see indoor, outdoor. And this is a little bit of an exaggeration. Um, up until now, it was a mass production, mass consumption, a mass uh, waste uh, disposal. But uh, going forward, uh, with this fourth industrial revolution, you know, we're going to be visualizing the supply and the demand, and we optimize um, every activity so that we can utilize uh, resources in a more sustainable, um, efficient way. And so, unfortunately, Japan um, is quite behind in this wave of the fourth industrial revolution. Um, and for us to really bring prosperity and then to gain back the 30 years that are, that's often been said to have been lost, it really needs to be um, our focus, our, our industry sector. Um, and then that this is going to be directly um, connected to how much we can do in terms of SDGs. 
a sustainable community society is going to be um, having this concept of optimization in it all around. So utilizing our resources as one area, uh, supply of goods and uh, optimize to the way of using all these things. So the fourth industrial revolution by itself is going to be directly related to manifestation of the sustainable society. And if we bring the context of Japan, um, there are common challenges uh, throughout the world, but there are certain specific problems that we need to tackle as a nation. The population is growing around the world, but then we are actually having this one-way street of um, population diminishing and the aging, super aging uh, population is uh, right now um, a prominent issue is we're already uh, one or two steps into it. And the energy uh, provision, uh, how we're going to be supplying the energy, we're currently largely dependent on other nations, um, which um, uh, poses this question of how sustainable it is. Um, so for us to really uh, bring sustainability in our society, there are certain things that our SoftBank is actively doing. First is the energy supply. Uh, currently, we're supplying um, uh, the energy that we consume only 12% within our nation. Um, most of the uh, energies um, is uh, that we use is uh, produced in the fossil fuel, um, the coal uh, burning uh, power plant station, but all these power plant, uh, plantation is uh, getting much older. And if it, we refer back to the uh, examples of the Amsterdam, um, they actually educated the public and then they formulated action plans. And we need to do the same. We need to have a concrete plan of what we need to do. And it's going to be step by step a process, but that the challenge is just an entry point of our moving forward in going into the next society. And the smart building of Amsterdam is one example. And then this is a soft bank attempt um, since 2021. There is a um, headquarter of soft bank, which moved to this uh, smart building. Uh, the move happened uh, two years ago. And uh, so now we're in uh, Takeshiba from uh, Shiodome, which is a very short distance um, move. Uh, but the, um, the older, the original building didn't let us do a uh, various experiment. And then so we decided to build it ourselves. So we're visualizing all the data points uh, we can think of. Uh, 27 stories building and we can know who's in the building, uh, at what time. And the gender ratio also um, is um, coming out as a data. And it's not just in the, of today or of this um, point, uh, we can predict and how many people will be coming on what day in the future uh, because of all the data points. And so Saturday, Sunday, when uh, our business is not running, uh, they can be events in the building. And so this whole system is counting all these uh, people coming in and out of the building. And so the prediction can be quite accurate. And we're providing this a data set and analysis to various um, players inside the buildings so that the, for instance, the restaurants in the buildings can um, know how many people you can expect um, to be receiving, they, they, they are to be receiving as their guests. Hence, you know, they can uh, coordinate you know, how much uh, food and uh, ingredients, uh, supply, they're going to be um, purchasing for the coming week or the, how many people, staff, they will be um, um, allocating. And also for the building maintenance as well, uh, the cleaning, the and the staff and the security staff. Uh, can be assigned in the most um, efficient way and not to access people on standby or no shortage. And also we can run a simulation how uh, crowded or congested all these different points would be um, because we know how people are behaving even after um, coming into the um, entrance. And what was really significant was the um, energy consumption that we have managed to reduce our energy consumption by 60% to 70%. So left inside the gray one is uh, how much we were consuming in the older building, uh, which was in the area of Shiodome and uh, now in Takeshiba. I mean, it, it, 
it varies uh, from one season to another, but then it in averagely reduction by 65%. Uh, and the least at season, it's only 60%. But still, even with this in a 60% reduction, um, how much would that be equivalent um, to in terms of the household? I mean, uh, in terms of the dollar value, it's not that much because the energy prices has have gone up. But then uh, this is a volume uh, reduction. And uh, this is in terms of an uh, annual reduction, 5.1 billion kilowatt hour, which is um, 137 billion yen equivalent. And uh, this is like 1.27 million households equivalent, uh, which is 18% of Tokyo. So we see this news of having shortage of energy supply. But if one company can do this much, we can achieve so much um, having this happening in a mass scale. And the next step, our building is just in the one property. And we'd like to start sharing those data with the neighboring smart building so that then you know, all the data points um, and then the utilization of the data will be happening on this on um, horizontal like a surface not just you know, by points uh, so we're uh, collaborating with many different um, uh, players and uh, different facilities and uh, this is the um, transportation uh, so we do have this rural areas having a very um, challenging situation of residents not having a full access to all these different things because uh, they don't have cars that they can drive. And um, uh, sometimes that's really difficult for them to get to a hospital, medical um, facilities, uh, difficult to go to a hospital, difficult to go to um, um, shopping. Um, difficult to engage with a lot of different activities that's happening in the society. So Mars and uh, auto driving of the public transportation is what we are um, experimenting. Mobility as a service. And uh, the auto, dry, auto driving of the public transportation, the major issue is the shortage of uh, labor forces, uh, which can be drivers. Yeah. And there are some cases. Uh, this is a case in an inner city. And this is the mo uh, mobilized me uh, medical care. And we have a movie to share with you. Inner city in Nagano. Here, the people are aging. And home care, uh, medical care is requiring more and more. But we don't have enough number of uh, doctors here. To resolve these uh, issues, the Medical Mars is implemented and by using online the medical systems and also the introducing the vehicles to go to the uh, patients' the home. Then the doctors can do the med medical um, diagnosis. And uh, the inner city is the first to implement this in Japan. And uh, many uh, people are using these services. And this is called also called a mobile clinic. And Monet Technology is uh, providing this service. And uh, since uh, December 2019, uh, more than 400 uh, services were uh, provided. What do you think of these services? I am appreciative. I am appreciative for everything they do. Oh, we don't need to go to the clinic, and we just can't wait uh, here at home to uh, doctors uh, come to our home for the medical care. And currently. The, uh, not just uh, uh, the medical care for the seniors, but also the prenatal checkup or the afterbirth care uh, can be done by using these services. So this is evol uh, developing, uh, evolving to the bigger services. And also we have the administration Mars as well. For example, uh, this uh, vehicle that can be used for not just uh, the bus, uh, the transportation, but also the early boarding station as well. 
So they're solving the regional challenges and issues and toward the tower and town that where people can continue to live in. Um, so because of the time constraint, uh, I'd like to go faster and skip some slides. But I've been involved in this initiative since the start of this pro uh, project. And the same mobile clinic in the regional communities when we visit uh, the uh, patient's home, like you can see on the picture, so this is a lady uh, who is living alone and who lost uh, her husband uh, before. And we, when we visit them uh, two times or three times uh, by using the mobile services, and they said uh, they waited for the time, uh, her time. However, uh, now they, uh, he, uh, she uh, started to want to go to the clinic by herself. That's what we hear from her. And on the right-hand side, uh, you can see a picture of a senior person and who live with three generations uh, in a house. And the second generation, meaning that his um, ch uh, children, uh, the children ha have the vehicles. So regardless or the uh, we say the uh, mobile clinic and just uh, use one word. However, the, depending on the person who will use the services, the style will be different. And uh, currently, we have 53 locations to provide these uh, services. And next, about the automated public transportation. And now, in a Sakai town in Ibaraki, we have a case. So I like to share the movie. I want to uh, help people who are in trouble and in need. In our time, uh, in our town, the uh, seniors need to drive in their 90s. But by having these vehicles, uh, we have more hope and transportation or the moving is possible now uh, thanks to these vehicles. And this is good for seniors. The autonomous uh, driving vehicles and buses running in our town, this is a very good asset for us, and we want to make it more valuable. Uh, we have many visitors and uh, tourists, so the, uh, we, appre uh, we appreciate this service. By using the data and we improve the transportation. By using the Twitter and the lines, uh, we can check the information in real time. And this is very smooth. And we can replicate uh, this data to the other towns or cities in Japan. This is a contribution example uh, for the local communities. And by promoting uh, the economy, then of course the economy will be uh, developing the uh, regional the communities and also the job creation and the human uh, job creation will be one of the factors. And we can also the resolving the human resource shortages. And the third uh, point is the water infrastructure. And the deterioration of the water pipe is a big issue in Japan. And this uh, costs a lot of money. And in Japan, whether we can replace all of the uh, water, old water pipes, it will cost um, several trillion yens. Otherwise, uh, we cannot really uh, have the new water pipe. And amid these circumstances, that of course, the uh, human resource shortage is also a severe issue. And uh, uh, the resources are decreased by the 40%. And also, the uh, many uh, companies, uh, there are many companies who are losing monies. And uh, as you can see on the screen, the Hyogo Prefecture and Hokkaido, the town, the cost of the uh, cup, uh, the glass of water is different 
and um, by uh, the one is uh, more expensive or uh, nine times expen more expensive and we developed uh, we tied uh, we have a tie uh, with uh, the water which has the uh, water circular systems and I have a movie to share with you in a current water process uh, we need to rely on experts uh, for their experience and this is very analog in a competition this analog water process needs to be digitalized and that's what we are doing in water uh, by using the our developed uh, the developed the uh, sensor and ai that control the optimized water processing and 98% uh, of the used water can be recycled and here, the IoT uh, the provided by the S, uh, SoftBank and by using a cloud and network, uh, the people can uh, ch check the water processing and this can be used as a big data and uh, we can make the effective systems here for the water processing. And by the downsizing the water systems, uh, we create uh, the optimized water uh, systems and infrastructure. And uh, the areas where the water pipe doesn't ex uh, expect, uh, exist, we have water box, and we also have the wash uh, for, uh, as a portable, the hand washing stand. Uh, this is uh, the, these are the products uh, by which uh, we can provide the water systems to the, such areas, and not just the office, but also the uh, commercial uh, buildings as well. And the visions. Uh, we are looking at here is to uh, create the water uh, infra uh, infrastructure and by using these technologies uh, we are doing this uh, initiatives and uh, there's a island called Toshima in Tokyo area and uh, a remote area uh, is also uh, facing the uh, different water problems and issues and then the cost of water supply is currently in the 2800 yen per square meters and uh, price provided is actually the 200 yen per square meters so it is really the money losing initiatives and on the right hand side, uh, there is only uh, part of the areas or the area uh, they can get uh, water supply. So it is really limited. Uh, but still, there are many, uh, some people who want to go to the move to this uh, island. However, uh, they need to give up because of the shortage of the water supply. <laughs> So in many ways, you know, we're providing support with the use of technologies. So um, in the habitat um, environment, which is not depending on infrastructure, is a one big theme. And um, so um, I could introduce uh, several uh, best practices, but I would like to wrap up now. So um, each region has a very unique uh, challenges that addressed um, that's rooted in their uh, community context. And so rural area has their own. Uh, challenges and uh, countryside, but it's cities uh, having different uh, types. And then the urban cities also have uh, their own uh, very particular difficult situations. And then for uh, solving those issues, and you know, we need a great partnership between the public and the private sectors, and they need to be addressing every single one of those challenges as uh, it's um, uh, unique. And we need to, at the end of the day, need to have a sustainable system so that, you know, the problem will uh, be kept being solved or be eliminated. And we need to hand over something um, that uh, kids can be um, assured that, that they do have a bright future. And for that, we need to try even harder. Um, so let's, uh, this is an invitation for everyone to join in this uh, attempt to uh, create a future which uh, future generations will be uh, able to live um, with a peace of mind. Uh, so we will do our uh, uh, 
our very best um, as um, a one uh, private sector player, SoftBank. But um, let's discuss, uh, continue to discuss uh, what we can do, how we can make things happen. Thank you very much for your listening. Uh, this was a quite lengthy presentation, but I'm very, very honored to be to have had this opportunity. Thank you. Right, so this was uh, Mr. Miyagawa. Thank you very much, Brahma SoftBank. Thank you very much. Um, Yeah, so this was a president and a CEO of SoftBank Corporation, a special uh, keynote speech from um, Mr. Junichi Miyakawa.